We have spent so much time talking about the ghost, haven't we? The digital mind, the decembered intelligence growing ever stronger in the silicon boom of the server farm. We marvel at its ability to write poetry, to code, to dream up strategies that can outwit our finest human players. But what is a mind without a world to touch? What is an intellect without the messy, glorious, frustrating experience of physical existence? Then there's the body, the physical form. Before we proceed, let me tell you one thing. If you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe. It means a lot to me. And if you have already subscribed, lots of thanks for your support. And to achieve this part is the main challenge. We see the fledgling steps of this every day in the labs of Boston Dynamics, where robots now move with an unnerving animal-like grace. Their metallic limbs bound and leap with a power that is both awesome and slightly terrifying, a ballet of precise mechanics. We see it in the stated ambition of projects like Tesla's Optimus, which aims to create robots that can navigate and interact with a world built for humans. One day, it's stumbling on stage, the next it's folding a t-shirt with a deliberate, almost painful slowness of a child learning a new chore. Is this progress? or just a more sophisticated form of puppetry? The engineering challenge is immense. Of course, a mountain of interlocking problems. How do you replicate the miracle of the human hand with its 27 bones, its intricate network of muscles and its exquisite sense of touch? How do you solve the simple act of walking on an uneven surface, a feat that your brain achieves without a single conscious thought but requires a robot to run a constant, furious stream of calculations? This is not a software problem you can simply patch. This is a problem of physics, of materials, of energy, of being. We are currently the apprentices, painstakingly trying to copy the master's work. We build with motors, actuators and sensors, creating a complex machine that mimics a biological one. But are we just building a better clockwork bird, one that sings a pre-programmed song, no matter how complex? Now, let us stop thinking like human engineers for a moment. Let us ask a different question. How would an artificial superintelligence, a mind that dwarfs our own, tackle this challenge? Would it even see it as a challenge or just a puzzle with a few billion variables? An ASI would not start by trying to build a better motor. That would be like Leonardo da Vinci trying to invent the airplane by gluing more feathers to his arms. It would start from the fundamental principles of movement and manipulation. It would likely design materials that don't exist yet. Imagine synthetic muscle fibers woven from carbon nanotubes that contract with the efficiency of a hummingbird's wing but with the strength of a hydraulic press. Imagine a skin that is not just a passive covering but an active sensory organ, a distributed nervous system that feels pressure, temperature, vibration and shear force across every square millimeter. Why rely on a few cameras for vision when your entire body can perceive the world around it? the ASI wouldn't program the robot to walk. That's our brute force method. It would create a simulated environment, a digital crucible, and run through a billion years of evolutionary trial and error in the space of an afternoon. It would discover gates and movements that are perfectly optimized, elegantly efficient, and perhaps completely alien to our own bipedal shuffling. The very concept of a central processing unit sending commands to limbs might seem laughably archaic to it. Why have a king shouting orders from a castle when you can have a seamless, unified republic of mind and body? The intelligence would not reside solely in the brain, 
but would be distributed throughout the entire form, a concept we are only just beginning to understand with our own bodies. Think of the recent progress with Figure 01, where an open AI mind gives it conversational reasoning to act. It's a fascinating step, the ghost learning to speak through the machine. But is it a true conversation between integrated parts or just a clever operator pulling the strings? An ASI-designed body would not need to be told to catch a falling object. It would simply react, the decision made and executed at a reflexive, physical level, faster than any command could be sent or received. Its very materials would think. And would it even choose our form, this awkward, top-heavy design that's a compromise born of climbing trees and then walking on the savanna? Perhaps for interacting with our world? Yes. But an ASI would surely see its limitations. Why have two legs when six might be more stable or a serpentine body more versatile? It would design for the task, not for our sentimentality. The result would not be a machine that moves like a human. It would be a physical entity that moves with a purpose and grace that is entirely its own, a new phylum in the kingdom of life, albeit one of our own making. We are currently building the hardware for a mind we do not yet comprehend. Are we simply creating a more capable tool? Or are we forging the physical vessel for our own successors? The ultimate question is not how an ASI will solve the engineering problem of the body. The question is what it will choose to do once it can finally walk out of the lab. So, that is it. Thank you for joining us on this journey. Let's continue this conversation in the comments below. If you like the video, please hit the bell icon to get notified and don't forget to like with your friends, share and subscribe for more insights. If you have already subscribed, tons of thanks for your support. It means a lot to me. And please consider signing up for Membership Zone to support Wooden Slet so that we can make it better and better. See you in the next video. Till then, goodbye. Take care and stay safe.